In today's video, we'll talk about five tips and tricks on how to improve your macro filmmaking underwater. Coming up. Hi there and welcome back to the Underwater Filmmaking School. Thank you very much for tuning in again. For those of you who are new here, my name is Matthias and I'm an underwater cinematographer and filmmaker based in Zurich, Switzerland. Now on this channel here, we talk about filmmaking underwater. So we give you tips and tricks on how to improve your own filming underwater. We also do gear reviews and we share some animal behavior videos with you on this channel. So if any of this is of interest to you, consider subscribing to our channel so you're not missing out on any of the videos that will be published here on a very regular basis in the future. So let's get to today's video. A little while ago, I published a video called five tips for improving your wide angle video underwater. And today we want to go the other way. We want to talk about five tips on how you can improve your macro filming underwater. Personally, I think that filming macro underwater is very challenging. So I've looked around to see who I can actually ask uh, to collaborate, to join me in this video and share their tips and tricks for better macro shots underwater. And I couldn't think of anyone better suited for this task than my buddy Justin from the channel Critter Hunter. Now I link his channel up here and down in the video description. Uh, feel free to go over there and check his um, amazing content. Now he's a YouTuber who lives in the Philippines and his entire channel is about his journey of finding exciting critters underwater and filming them. So obviously he's the perfect match to talk to about filming macro underwater. And I've asked him to share with us his three top tips on how to acquire the best possible macro shots when filming underwater. Here is his first tip. So thank you so much, Matthias, for having me. And I got to thinking, what are three of the most essential pieces of equipment that I have so that I can shoot the best macro shots possible? And I think I have the answer. So my number one tip is to get a tripod. When I first started filming, I just could not get smooth shots. I it was just really frustrating. Even when I could focus and get a great subject, getting that steady shot was really hard. Uh, when you're in macro, you're zoomed in on a really tiny critter, little tiny details, and every little shake is visible. Even if you think you have amazing buoyancy, if you're holding a GoPro or a little camera, you can see every little shake of the screen, you know? So, when I got a tripod, it changed my life. So here's my tripod. Right now I have it on a uh, housing for a uh, compact camera. And this tripod is amazing. It's heavy, which you need, because if you're neutrally buoyant, it's just gonna float. But if it's heavy, it'll push down on the tripod. So when I'm diving, I find my subject. I can unscrew these real quick and put it down. You know, I got all three legs. Um, but I can also, a lot more of the time, I'll put it straight out and use it as a panning shot. But no matter what I use it for, the tripod on my tray for my housing is the most essential gear I think that I probably have. Thank you, Justin, and I could not agree more. A tripod is definitely the most important addition that you can make to your um, underwater camera kit to be able to get proper and really good macro shots filming underwater. Now, just a little heads up here, I will be making a separate video very shortly that will cover the different types of tripods that are on the market. We'll look at what different types there is. We'll also look at the um, drawbacks and the benefits of each of those different types of tripods so that you can actually make up your mind on which one is best for your needs. 
for number two, my most essential gear, I would say macro lenses. Now, you guys, this video is for everybody. You don't have to have 15, 20, $30,000 worth of camera gear uh, to be a, to, to get good shots. And in fact, my favorite, even though I have DSLR and expensive setups, my favorite go-to camera is the one I just showed you, a Canon G7X2, which is a compact. That being said, you're definitely gonna need macro wet lenses to get those small, tiny critters. Now, when I put these on, in fact, I have a few that I'll bring on a dive. Maybe I see a, a nudie break and I only need this because the nudie break isn't too small. But this magnifies it, clears it up, makes it super crisp, more than the capabilities of the camera by itself. Uh, or maybe I see some skeleton shrimp. I can put these together, toss it onto my housing, the 67 millimeter thread, and I'll get super, super tiny shots like this one. Another thing I really love, love about macro wet lenses is that I can take them off. Let's say I'm shooting a little tiny frogfish this big and I have my macro lenses on and then I look up and there's a whale shark. Well with my DSLR system with the lenses inside the housing, I'm screwed. Whale shark's not getting filmed. But with my macro lenses or my wet lenses, I can take them off real quick and film that as well. So I really love that option. Again, a very useful tip. Thank you, Justin. Wet lenses are a crucial piece of gear that we need when filming macro underwater. And you said it, particularly if you film with compact cameras, um, you do wanna use wet macro lenses in front of the main lens. Now, if you're using cameras that use exchangeable lenses, where you can actually attach a macro lens as a main lens onto the body of the camera, the wet lenses might not be as important anymore, but you can still use them on top of your macro lenses um, and get just closer and get images that look even more impressive than just using the regular macro lens from your camera. All right guys, so last but not least, my third most essential equipment that really changed my footage has to be lighting. So one thing I love about macro, as opposed to wide angle photography, is the lighting. If I see an awesome reef and all that, it's just too far for the light to reach and it doesn't translate to camera. I have to do some major white balance and adding reds and all this in post production just to get some color. But with macro, basically any light is gonna reach when you're only three inches away from your critter. So any light will do. I have an Orca torch. I know Matthias has talked about that, but these are wide beam. They can go on real bright 5,000 lumens or real narrow. You know, there's a lot of settings and I like playing with them and experimenting to see how bright I want my subject. But once I have that dialed in, it's amazing color. I mean, just look at this footage of a flamboyant cuttlefish. When you have the lighting, all those natural colors and the things you see in your mask will pop out in the camera and it's amazing. So when I combine this light, shine it down on my subject, or maybe sometimes I'll even use a snoot. Uh, you can watch some of Matthias' videos about using a snoot and it focuses that beam of light right on an interesting part of the critter. It's amazing. So when I use my lights, macro lenses, and a tripod underwater. It is awesome for great underwater macro photography or video. So there you have it guys. Like I said, you don't need 15, 20, $100,000 camera setups to get awesome footage. I've been seeing in all the Facebook forums and photography groups, great footage and photos coming from Canon G7Xs, Sony RX100s, Olympus, TG5s, like really budget friendly cameras. And with these three extras or tips, I think you guys could get your underwater macro videography to the next level. 
So there you have it. Thank you, Matthews, for having me. And I look forward to hearing your tips because you're the pro. So see you guys. Obviously, light is important, and you mentioned it, Justin, with shooting macro, you don't really need a huge lightning setup like you would normally need when you wanna shoot some wide angle um, shots. One light is normally enough when we talk about macro, unless you wanna use the light to set a specific atmosphere in your image then you will probably benefit from having more than one light so you can direct it from whichever way you want to. Um, I've personally really uh, become a fan of snoot lightning for my macro shots. Um, I've got a couple of videos explaining how I used to snoot to um, get some really cool and dramatic shots when filming macro underwater. I'll link them up here so you can go and check them out if you want to. I'm also planning on making more videos on the different techniques you can use to actually get different types of shots with the snoot light, especially for macro videography. So thank you mate for those three very valuable tips that you've shared with us today. I've got two more that I would like to add to the list so we actually complete the five tips that we mentioned at the beginning of the video. First of all, I think that proper buoyancy is very, very important when filming underwater, not just macro, but in specific when we talk about macro filming. Now this applies if you're not using a tripod. Obviously if you're using a tripod, your gear is gonna be heavy. So it can sit on the ground in the sand and you can get some stable shots using the tripod. But if you're not using a tripod, if you're hand holding, um, shooting macro underwater, you really wanna make sure that your gear is properly weighted and neutrally buoyant. It shouldn't float up, it shouldn't sink down. You should actually be able to maneuver your whole kit around by just using one finger to push your camera uh, set up through the water. This is how neutrally buoyant it should be. Now I know that getting your system there is very challenging. There's different kinds of floats and stuff that you can use to actually get the buoyancy to where you wanna have it, but it can be very challenging. I'm speaking from my own experience, so I've decided to make a video that will come out soon on this channel here, where we talk about different options on how you can actually achieve that neutral buoyancy on your camera rig. We'll talk about different floats and how to attach and how to use them on your gear to uh, get your camera buoyancy to where you want it. And last but not least, tip number five that I've got for you today is to shoot in higher frame rates when shooting macro underwater. Now the reason for this is that if you shoot in let's say 50 or 60p um, underwater and then you do your post-production editing on a 25 or a 24 or a 30p timeline, you can then slow down your image and that will help you stabilize your shots. So in addition of obviously using your camera stabilization, your lens stabilization on a camera like the GH5, your in-body stabilization, in addition to using all those tools on your camera, also shoot in higher frame rates and then you can slow it down in post-production. Don't expect it to do wonders to your footage, but it will definitely help to just smooth out some of those micro shakes that you might get in your shots when hand holding them um, and shooting macro underwater. So there you go, those are the five tips that my buddy Justin and I have for you today when it comes to filming macro underwater. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was useful to you. I hope you got something out of it. If that's the case, as always, please do not forget to hit that like button. You know it does mean a lot to me. And also consider subscribing to the channel so you're not missing out on any content that will be uploaded here in the future. Please also use the comment function below in the video if you have any comments regarding our tips that we released here today. Also, if you do wanna have a specific topic covered here in the future, please put it down in the comment section as well. And now, before you turn around and look at something else, head over to Justin's channel, Critter Hunter, and have a look at his amazing macro shots that he's got in his videos on that channel. 
Also, don't forget to say hi from me so he knows that you're coming from this channel here. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.